Step into the Sugar Baker & Associates interior design firm, where style meets sass and hilarity reigns supreme. From Delta Burke's iconic portrayal of Suzanne Sugarbaker to Dixie Carter's razor-sharp tongue, these dynamic women challenged stereotypes, championed women's rights, and fearlessly addressed controversial topics. They didn't just design spaces, they designed a cultural shift, challenging the status quo and inspiring audiences with their unapologetic honesty and genuine tomfoolery. It became a symbol of female empowerment, proving that women could be successful, funny, and unafraid to speak their minds. But what are these iconic Southern Bells up to these days? Let's find out. When Delta Burke was cast for the role of Suzanne Sugarbaker, she was a sprightly 29 years old, ready to make her mark on the small screen. Before designing women, Delta had already made a name for herself as a beauty queen, winning the title of Miss Florida in 1974, before venturing into acting, appearing in various television shows and films, including the hit miniseries The Seekers. However, it was her role as Suzanne that skyrocketed her career and made her a house household name. Unfortunately, Delta's time on the show wasn't without its share of rumors and scandals. There were reports of clashes between Delta and the show's creator, Linda Bloodworth Thomason, leading to tension on the set. However, these rumors were later debunked, and it was revealed that Delta had been struggling with personal issues, including weight gain and depression, which affected her working relationship with the cast and crew. After she departed from Designing Women in 1991, Delta continued to showcase her talents in various projects. She starred in her own sitcom, Delta, and appeared in shows such as Touched by an Angel and Women of the House. Burke even had notable stage performances in productions like Steel Magnolias and Thoroughly Modern Millie. Outside of her acting career, Delta has shown resilience and determination and has become an advocate for mental health awareness, openly discussing her struggles with depression. She co-authored a book titled Delta Style, Eve Wasn't a Size 6 and Neither Am I, which focused on body image issues and self-acceptance. In her personal life, Delta has had two marriages. She was married to actor Gerald McCraney from 1989 until their divorce in 1997, before tying the knot with actor and producer Ted Shackelford in 2008, and they have remained happily married since. Today, at 66, Burke continues to thrive and remains active in the entertainment industry. Jean Smart was born on September 13, 1951 in Seattle, Washington. She discovered her passion for acting at a young age and honed her skills at the University of Washington's Professional Actors Training Program. When Jean was cast as the sharp-witted Charlene Fraser Stillfield on Designing Women, the young star was 34, bringing her incredible talent and comedic timing to the show. Her portrayal of Charlene, the sweet-natured beauty queen, quickly won the hearts of audiences, and she became an integral part of the ensemble. Jean, get serious. Who do you think you're talking to? After her stint in Designing Women, Jean continued to make waves in the entertainment industry. Notable projects include her Emmy-winning performance as Lana Gardner in Frasier, her memorable appearances in 24, Hawaii Five-0, and Fargo, as well as her critically acclaimed portrayal of Martha Logan in 24. Jean's achievements go beyond her acting career. In addition to her impressive body of work, she has been an advocate for several charitable causes, including the Alzheimer's Association, Alzheimer's Foundation of America, and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. In her personal life, Jean has been married only once. She was married to Richard Gilliland, an actor, in 1987. The couple had two children together, Connor and Bonnie, and their marriage lasted over three decades until Richard's passing in 2021. Today, Jean Smart remains an unstoppable force in the entertainment industry. She has garnered critical acclaim for her recent performances, including her Emmy-winning role in HBO's Mayor of Easttown. At the age of 71, she continues to deliver powerful and nuanced performances that captivate audiences. Dixie Carter was born on May 25, 1939, in McLemoresville, Tennessee, and was 47 years old when she was cast for the role that would become one of her most memorable and beloved characters. Before designing women, Dixie Carter had already established herself as a talented actress on stage and screen. Dixie had appeared in numerous theater productions, including her critically acclaimed performance in the Broadway play Pal 
Joey. On the TV front, Dixie had guest roles on popular shows like The Edge of Night and The Doctors. However, it was her portrayal of the quick-witted Julia Sugarbaker that brought her to the limelight. The role perfectly showcased her impeccable comedic timing. After her time on Designing Women, Cross your mouth, uh-huh, that's it, that's it. Dixie Carter continued to work on both television and stage. Carter had appeared in several TV shows, including Family Law, Law & Order SVU, and Desperate Housewives. She also returned to the theater, starring in productions like Thoroughly Modern Millie and The Color Purple. Outside of her acting career, Dixie Carter was involved in various philanthropic efforts. She supported organizations like the Special Olympics and was an advocate for children's literacy programs. In her personal life, Dixie Carter had an enduring love story. She was married to actor and singer Hal Holbrook, known for his iconic portrayal of Mark Twain. They tied the knot on May 27, 1984, and remained married until her passing. Dixie and Hal had a strong partnership and often worked together on stage, delighting audiences with their combined talents. Hal and I have been leading cuisine lovers for years. Tragically, Dixie Carter passed away on April 10, 2010, at the age of 70, due to complications from endometrial cancer. Today, Dixie Carter's legacy lives on through her memorable performances. Annie Potts was born on October 28, 1952, in Nashville, Tennessee, which means she was around 36 years old when cast for the role of Mary Jo Shively. Before designing women, Annie appeared in various television shows and films, including popular movies like Ghostbusters and Pretty in Pink. Her performances showcased her comedic timing and charismatic presence, earning her a dedicated fan following. On the set of Designing Women, Annie shared a close bond with Dixie Carter and Delta Burke. Their chemistry on screen translated into a genuine friendship off screen. Happy, happy birthday to you! <laughs> After her time on the show, Annie continued working in film and television. Some notable projects she was a part of include the popular TV series Love and War and the critically acclaimed film Toy Story, where Annie lent her voice to the beloved Bo Peep. Outside of her acting career, Annie Potts has been actively involved in charitable work. She has supported organizations such as the National Resource Defense Council and the American Foundation for Equal Rights. Her dedication to social and environmental causes have made a significant impact beyond the realm of entertainment. We shouldn't keep hearing from every corner all the time that men are so much better than we are. In terms of her personal life, Annie has had several marriages. Potts was first married to Stephen Hartley, an actor, from 1973 to 1978. They have two sons together named Clay and Doc. In 1990, Annie married her second husband, Greg Antonacci, and then her third husband, B. Scott Senecal, before finally settling on James Heyman. The couple's relationship is still going strong to this day. As for now, Annie Potts is 70 years old and continues to shine in the entertainment industry. She has appeared in numerous TV shows and films. Most notably, you might have seen her as Meemaw on Young Sheldon. Meshach Taylor was born on April 11, 1947 in Boston, Massachusetts. Meshach's acting journey began in the 1970s with appearances in various TV shows such as MASH, Barney Miller, and The White Shadow. He also showcased his skills on the big screen in movies like Damien, Omen 2, and The Howling. However, it was in 1986 that Meshach landed the role that would define his career. Anthony Bovier. He says to me this morning, uh, tell me, Anthony, do you like watermelon? <laughs> and so I'm thinking, this is not a good question. He joined the cast during the show's second season and quickly became a fan favorite with his endearing portrayal of the sassy ex-con. Meshach was 39 years old when he was cast as Anthony, bringing a unique charm and wit to the character. After Designing Women concluded in 1993, Meshach continued to work in the entertainment industry, taking on a variety of roles in TV shows and films. Taylor appeared in shows like Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide, Criminal Minds, and Hannah Montana. Talk about versatility. Outside of his acting career, Meshach was an advocate for the fight against AIDS and supported organizations such as AIDS Project Los Angeles and The Trevor Project, which provides crisis intervention and suicide prevention services to LGBTQ youth. In terms of his personal life, Meshach was married to Bianca Ferguson from 1983 until his passing. They had four children together and shared a close and loving relationship throughout their marriage. Sadly, Meshach Taylor passed away on June 28, 2014 at the age of 67 after a battle with colorectal cancer. Today, Meshach Taylor is remembered as a talented actor and his legacy lives on through his memorable performances and the impact he made on his fans and colleagues alike. 
Very sissy muffy toughy. Mm -hmm. Designing Women broke new ground by placing strong, intelligent, and opinionated women front and center, proving that female-led comedies could not only thrive, but could also spark important conversations. The show fearlessly confronted topics like feminism, gender equality, racism, and AIDS, presenting them with a perfect blend of humor and heart, giving them the emotional appeal that audiences loved so dearly. Pull your pants up. We got work to do. Nevertheless, at the center of the show's success was its exceptional cast, whose chemistry and talent made the characters come alive. The female leads formed a dynamic ensemble, each bringing their unique flair to the unforgettable ladies of Sugar Baker design. It set the stage for shows like Parks and Recreation, The Golden Girls, and Grace and Frankie, which followed in its footsteps, championing strong female characters.